In, in the 2012 release, there's a number of improvements also that we've, uh, we've added into Batch uh, to facilitate scene linear workflows that are becoming more and more ubiquitous. And the first thing is in the LUT editor, um, there's been a lot of requests on the forums about how to actually convert scene linear footage into something that would be more video-like, and how would you make it look uh, this, uh, you know, the same as in other applications such as Nuke. Well, the, the, the first thing that I want to point out is that if you go to the LUT, uh, to, uh, to the LUT uh, node or any, any instance of the, uh, of the LUT builder, which may be either in the clip inside of Batch, the uh, desktop module, or the node, you will notice here that you'll have a preset, uh, uh, a preset pop-up. Now, if, for example, I wanted to uh, convert this uh, scene linear image into something that would be more video-like, uh, I can actually select uh, a, uh, amongst a bunch of presets here. And one of them is scene linear to video for images, which would be appropriate for an image like this, confirm. So once I do this, I can switch my viewport to video, and it will give me an appropriate uh, rendition, an actual, an appropriate tone mapping of the original scene linear image into something that is more video-like. You will notice that the minute that you select that preset, actually it uh, pops up a new tone mapping uh, algorithm that we are introducing in 2012, which is called Photomap. You don't really necessarily have to worry about the details of Photomap if you don't understand anything about tone mapping, uh, the presets are there for you to assist you in setting up uh, the tone mapping in um, an appropriate way for most of the situations that you may encounter. Now, one very common uh, situation is if you want to compare results with um, uh, another application, and mainly uh, uh, typically what Nuke would do, you have a preset here, which is scene linear to video via sRGB, which uh, kind of reproduces what uh, Nuke does. Uh, and so if I select that, what this will do is essentially just apply an sRGB curve uh, to the image to, uh, to convert it into something that is more video-like. Um, note that this is typically not a very good tone mapping strategy, but since it's very common, we, uh, we actually uh, thought of adding it as a preset just for the sake of visual consistency uh, across multiple applications. If you actually want to do something that is an appropriate tone mapping that gives you a pleasing result, you should select scene linear to video for images, which will actually do an appropriate tone mapping, which by default should give pleasing results on a video monitor. Um, uh, talking about Photomap, uh, so Photomap is, is, is actually, um, again, a tone mapping utility that essentially allows you to control all of the different characteristics of, let's say, a virtual photographic system, which is basically what tone mapping is about. Um, it actually separates the visual, uh, the, um, the display conditions uh, labeled as encoding from the actual characteristics of the photographic system that you're trying to simulate. So one, uh, one important thing to understand about Photomap is when its settings are left at zero, it's actually performing uh, already a Photomap, um, sorry, a tone mapping. And uh, so let me switch to Gamma 1.0 for you to understand what is going on. Um, uh, so with Gamma set to 1.0, what you will see is that those different parameters of Photomap actually allow you to control the shape of an S-curve that kind of virtually, that simulates a virtual um, photographic system. And, uh, and uh, based on, and, and essentially you'll be able to control every single characteristic uh, of the various portions of the curve. The very high portion of the curve, the slope of the uh, intermediate high portion, the, 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 the slope of the middle portion, again, here the slope of of the uh, lower uh, portion of the curve and the very bottom of the curve. So those are typically really the the different uh, the different portions that you can control with the different uh, with the different settings here. So if I go to high. Uh, to highlight detail, you will notice that as I tweak this, I'm actually adjusting the slope of the very top of the S curve. Now, I'm not seeing a perfect S here because uh, essentially, typically, a, a, a photographic system uh, assumes a logarithmic uh, scale on both horizontal and, um, and vertical 
axis, which I don't have here. So it's a bit of a deform S that I have here. But essentially here, what I'm moving up here is uh, what is the, uh, again, the very top portion of the S, which, I, uh, which will then have an effect on the highlights. Highlight contrast will actually control the slope of the intermediate portion here in the highlights. So it will actually have an effect on the overall contrast, perceived contrast of the highlights. The contrast parameter is going to actually adjust the slope of this middle curve. So if, if I actually start changing the contrast, you see how my S is kind of pivoting around, uh, 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 around the middle portion of the curve here. Shadow contrast is actually going to affect the slope. And so let me just zoom in here so that you better see what's what's happening in the, in the bottom portion of the curve. As I adjust the contrast, you see that it's actually adjusting here the slope of this um, uh, darker, uh, for the darker regions. And this will actually have an effect on actually creating like really deeper blacks. Shadow detail, on the other hand, again, I'm going to zoom in so that you see, since I don't have a logarithmic scale, actually allows you to offset the very bottom of the, uh, of the curve. And as I adjust this, it actually allows you to um, uh, essentially uh, uh, remove like um, uh, two uh, uh, blacks that would be too, too dark. You can actually shift it up and down here to control actually the minimum level of, of black that you would want inside of the tone mapped image. Now again, if you don't want to actually worry about any of this, uh, you, can you should feel very comfortable using the presets. And, and again, here you have video to a uh, scene linear via sRGB, which will provide, uh, again, a, a similar, um, sorry, I should have used scene linear to video here in this particular context, okay, which will provide uh, t the typical transformation that is, uh, that is applied in third-party packages. Uh, but I could go ahead and select uh, a scene linear for video to images. You see I also have a setting to go from scene linear to logarithmic, uh, from logarithmic to scene linear, which is uh, extremely useful for film scans. Uh, so anyway, so these presets are here to simplify things for you so that you don't actually have to worry about the whole complexity of dealing with uh, uh, um, a tone mapping and, uh, and the details of a, of a tone mapping algorithm. Um, another thing that I'd like to point out is uh, most of the keyers in 2012 actually will allow you to specify the image type that you're inputting. Now, this is going to be very important if you, uh, if for example, you would like to do some uh, some keying on a scene linear image. It's important to switch to scene linear. This will internally uh, create a uh, uh, an internal transform that brings all the dynamic range of the image into a more suitable color space to actually perform the extraction mechanism and as a result you'll have a much more natural control over the keying process even though you're manipulating high dynamic range images so something to think about when when you're uh, when you're planning on actually doing some keying on high dynamic range images uh, remember that now all of the keyers uh, except for the old discrete keyer actually will support an image type input and if you're dealing with 16-bit float high dynamic range images, remember to, put, to switch it to scene linear. It will provide an easier keying experience as you're manipulating the different keyers. Um, so if you look at the master keyer, the, the RGB keyer, pretty much all of them actually now have an image type input that you can, that you can select uh, uh, depending, on the, depending on what it is that you're trying to key. Um, nodes like Exposure already had this type of, uh, of control here where you would actually select the type of input in order to properly compute exposure. Uh, but nodes also like Regrain and Denoise now have these different parameters. And it's extremely important if you want to use Regrain on something that's a high dynamic range image, uh, please remember to actually switch the, uh, the input to the appropriate uh, type of image as this will avoid any kind of negative values or parasitic negative values to be generated by regrain um, and uh, the custom also the custom node the custom uh, regrain mode also uh, which now supports the histogram will allow you to actually generate results that are uh, compatible with scene linear images and will not generate uh, out of range values that don't make any sense 
Uh, same thing with denoise, which is the new uh, uh, the new uh, noise reduction algorithm. In the node setup, you also have an image type here that you can switch to scene linear. It's important to do so again if you're dealing with high dynamic range images. So keep that in mind. Color correct uh, also introduces uh, uh, one uh, one new parameter, uh, which is the pivot. Uh, and if you are actually uh, planning on using color correction on a scene linear image, um, remember that the pivot, if you want to uh, uh, correctly uh, compute contrast, the pivot should actually be set to 18%, which is uh, uh, again the average gray on 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 a scene linear image. Uh, so again, you have explicit control over the over the the pivot point um, that uh, is now available in the color correct and that's true regardless of which type of image you're inputting but the one thing to remember is that a pivot should actually be set to 18% on an HDR scene linear image if you want the contrast to be properly rendered um, uh, with a color correction tool so something to think about also uh, one thing that I also like to mention is that logic up also now has clamping controls that are actually very useful if you're planning on using certain blend types that simply are not meant to be used with HDR images. A perfect example would be something like screen. Screen is, is essentially a blending mode that is designed to, um, to expect uh, uh, clamped images. Uh, so uh, nothing that would have anything, no negative values, no values above one. So anyway, so... Um, so now Logic Up allows you to decide what you want to do, essentially work with no clamping, clamping, or clamp negative. Again, if you do not clamp anything, you should expect certain blend types to uh, provide, and screen again is a very good example, to provide uh, inaccurate results simply because they're not designed to deal with HDR footage. Um, and that's about it for, uh, for the new uh, scene linear options in 2012.